Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Helen from Crafty So and So. If you're new here, welcome. And I am doing an interesting video today. So if you've not already seen, I am pregnant today. I'll leave a link in the video in the description to the video of the announcement just in case you're interested. And I'll also leave a link to my Instagram if you want to see any little behind the scenes pictures and things like that. But today I'm going to be talking to you about seven ways that you can stay safe while sewing while pregnant. So first of all, obviously I'm not a doctor, I'm not medically trained, so if you incur any kind of issues, you feel anything wrong with your body, when you are sewing, make sure that you stop, take a break, and if it continues, then call your midwife or your GP just to make sure that you've not done something, overstretched yourself or anything like that. So if you do feel any of these things, make sure that you stop, take a rest, and bring somebody if you feel it needs looking at. So now onto the fun stuff. So obviously when you are pregnant, you're gonna have all this extra weight around, you're gonna have this extra thing that's kind of just in front of you and you're not gonna be able to move as mobile as you once were, or you're gonna find things a little bit more uh, difficult. So also sewing is very, you're very capable of sewing while you're pregnant. That's not something that you should be worried about. It's not something you can't do. It's not something you have to stop doing. In fact, it's probably something that you are going to enjoy more because you can make baby clothes, you can make more clothes for yourself in different formats. Um, and it's something that you can kind of keep yourself occupied, especially if you are taking more time off work or if you, like me, work from home. Um, and I'm trying to not overwork myself too much. So I find that sewing's a nice thing to just kind of tune out to. Um, so all these things, you know, if you enjoy sewing anyway, you're gonna probably still enjoy it even when you're pregnant. So here are my seven ways that you can stay safe while sewing while pregnant. So number one is work at a table at a good height. So pattern cutting tables is usually around waist height. Um, this is so then you aren't bending over too much. You're not scrunching, you're not crouching. Um, and you are able to kind of just lay everything out and you don't have to do too much stretching. This is perfect if you've got a table that's a little bit taller or you can buy one like from Ikea that lifts up so you can actually change the height from sitting to standing. So look at seeing if you can get a standing table, which is good for you even when you're not pregnant. I will point out it's good for you even when you're not. So this is not just a purchase that you do for pregnancy. This is something that you can do full time and it's definitely worth the money if you like being able to kind of cut out and not have to scrunch down on the floor or the carpet or bend over a lot. So I say this because you the, the, the less kind of stretching you have to do in awkward positions. So obviously you're going to be getting your exercise, you're going to be doing some sort of maybe Pilates or yoga or whatever you like doing. Um, but you want to make sure that you're not doing any awkward stretching, you're not over doing it on your uh, stomach area because you don't want to feel like, I don't know, you just don't want to be doing too much that's awkward movements and that can often happen when you're sewing. So make sure that you're using a nice height table so then everything's easier to grab hold of, everything's easier to reach to and you're just working at a better height. So number two is making sure that you're sewing at a desk or table height. I know this sounds odd, but some people just kind of use a little table to the side or they don't really use a proper table to sew at because if you've not got a proper setup and you're just kind of using whatever space is available, this can cause hindrance because it can cause you to crouch over your sewing machine um, and not sit at a proper height. You need to be sitting with a nice straight back and you need to be able to sit and kind of have your arms at a 90 degree angle and then you you know, you're not putting any major strain on major parts of your body, such as your spine and your back. So make sure you're sewing at a desk or a table. Dining room tables are just as good because they're at that same sort of height. So even if you've got to work at your dining room table, go for it, do it, make the space and make sure you are sitting properly. Number three is to make sure you've got a nice, efficient system in place. 
So personally, I don't have a dedicated space for sewing. I have my desk here for work and then I've got a little desk here that I can use for filming these videos and working on anything I do for these videos. So anything sewing related is on this desk. Anything work related is this desk. But I also have a wheelie trolley. So I'll see if I can pull it along. Because if not, I have to get up and go and get something from the storage at the back behind me here or it gets like tucked under the desk I'm trying to make sure that everything's kind of in like a hands reach or grab so I've got a little trolley that I got from Hobbycraft you can also buy these from Ikea and they're very good and they are three tier baskets on wheels and you can pull it around and it's really good because it fits right next to my desk and I can just have everything I need in there that I need generally for sewing, you know, scissors, pattern, weights, tape measure, everything I need, pins, the lot is already in there ready to go. So even if I'm working at over there on the floor or if I'm working here, I can have it. I can also, if I need to use my wife's desk in her office, I can wheel the trolley into there. So there's definitely a lot of options with that. So look at having your tools really accessible, whether that's on a pegboard or on some sort of like organization, organization on a desk area, or like mine in the little craft trolley. Make sure you've got everything kind of to hand to make sure you're not having to scramble a lot because you don't want to be using the energy that you do have on trying to find things, small things, when they could just be sat ready for you to use. So number four is to have an easy flowing workspace. So I'm, what I mean by that is like for me personally here, I have a desk I can work at. I can have my machine set up on one side, my overlocker set on the other, and then I've got a space in between to work out pattern layers and everything else like that. So if you, if you have the space in your home to create a little area which has already got your sewing machine and your overlocker set up ready for you to use then everything else can kind of be you know worked around so like the dining room table for example can you spare a little bit of that table at one end to set up your sewing machine and your overlocker so then you don't have to get it up and out every time um, just because you don't want to have to lift it, you don't want to have to ask somebody else to lift it up for you. Um, some of them obviously aren't very heavy, it's just more of being able to keep things kind of streamlined so you're not having to use the energy you do have to kind of set things up and blah, blah, blah. it's like tiring. So try and have a space where you've got things set up, ready to go and you can just sit down and start sewing and it's all just done ready for you. Number five is to take your time with each part. So what I mean by this is that obviously if you are, for example, sewing a dress, you might want to break these down into chunks. So you might be like, I'll cut out the pattern and the fabric this evening. I'll start sewing it together that evening and then finish it off that evening. So if you are looking at trying to kind of it's a it's a way of being able to kind of just like compartmentalize things so then you're not overdoing it on the work front um especially if you've been to work and you still want to sew i'd only do a certain section especially if you are for one in your first trimester where you can be really tired you might not want to sew at all I found my first trimester was really tiring, I didn't want to get off the sofa, I didn't really want to do anything and I just wanted to sleep all the time. And then, you know, if you get into your third trimester and you're really struggling and things, you know, feel really weighted down and you don't really have that much energy because you get into the end of your pregnancy. So look at doing small chunks, you know, small chunks at a time, make sure you have plenty of rest between. Um, and just kind of make these things a little bit more doable spread it over a couple of days or even like you know if it's a smaller task a couple of hours just so then you are making sure that you're getting plenty of rest plenty of kind of like breaks in and you're not overdoing it on your body number six is to make sure that you take plenty of breaks and plenty of fluids so I tend to generally when I'm sewing I tend to get like really in the zone I get kind of like buried into it and I get really intense 
and I often forget that I need to go take a break and get a drink and something to eat and even go to the toilet I kind of just well like no I'll get this I'll get this bit done first and then I'll go and then I end up going to a next bit and next bit so make sure that you are taking plenty of breaks you're stopping every so often to make sure you have something to drink if like me you like drinking a lot of water or um, like dilute juice I have my water bottle it's not currently here because it's <laughs> on my bed nightstand but yeah so I have a water bottle which I fill up every time and I kind of just keep that to hand and so then I'm getting plenty of fluids in I'm making sure because it's in my eye line because it's there glaring at me it's a bright yellow pineapple water bottle so I don't miss it and so I see it and I know that I need to have some water I can tell that my throat is dry and yeah so that's really good make sure you're getting plenty of fluids if you have somebody in the house that can make you a cup of tea get them to make you a cup of tea and bring it to you no shame you know you are <laughs> you aren't going through something that's extremely life-changing to yourself your family and your body so if somebody can come and make you a cup of tea ask them to they'll do it um, I also say to have you know something on hand I've been trying to drink a lot more like natural juices just to try and keep all my vitamins in and everything like that so make sure that you keep everything you need to hand at your desk or work area your sewing space just so then you can make sure you're taking care of yourself while you're still enjoying what you love and finally the funnest one yet number seven is to have plenty of snacks on hand so I found something um I find I find that once I get to a certain point in the day generally in the afternoon mm, around three or four maybe maybe just a little earlier I get this really like lull feeling um doesn't matter how much I've drink doesn't matter what I've eaten for lunch nothing like that nothing but every day I seem to have this little lull. And when I've been sewing and I'm sat in the room or I've been filming, I tend to obviously be like, I'm gonna finish this first and then I'll go. So I decided to keep a few little things on hand. So I found that eating like anything sweet, personally for me, I found was really good because um, it was the, just a sugar boost I needed. And it's common apparently in pregnancy that you just need a little boost of sugar every now and then to do with your obviously blood sugar levels. So I decided to keep a few little snacks on hand, packets of crisps, obviously my water bottle and some kind of like sweets or something like that or a bit of chocolate just so then if I feel like I'm having a bit of a lull I don't have to tread all the way down to the kitchen. I've got something to hand just to give me a little boost and then I'm good to go. This is also great if you, like me, are having some major cravings and you just kind of like have to have it all the time. Um, I just kind of keep things stashed away in my office and then my wife does not know. So that's a really good thing. Also, if you're trying to hide them for the kids and you just want them for you, but you don't want the kids to have them, hide them in your sewing space or your office, wherever you're sewing. Um, use the little tray that sits on the back of your sewing machine. That's fun use that to keep your skittles in have you seen that on um, pinterest that's really fun but yeah find somewhere that you can store your snacks and your sweets and then you can snack away when you are ready while you're sewing and have a nice little sewing session so that is everything for this video i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it's been useful and if you have make sure you subscribe like this video and turn on the notification bell so you can keep up to all my videos in the future have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.